China says it has tested and transferred a prototype global early warning data platform that fuses satellites, radars, and other sensors to track up to 1,000 simultaneous launch events. In this video, we break down what was actually built, how the data engine works, from distributed computing and QUIC links to AI training, and what this means for costs, transparency, and the future of space safety compared with America's Golden Dome. China's research team describes a physically dispersed, logically unified, early warning platform that stitches together inputs from satellites, radars, optical sensors, and sea and ground-based systems into one live picture. Instead of replacing older hardware, the platform overlays a software-centric layer that ingests fragmented and heterogeneous data and turns it into unified outputs such as launch alerts, trajectory tracks, target imagery, and identification assessments. According to public reporting, the prototype has been tested and transferred for operational evaluation, with the headline capability to handle up to 1,000 simultaneous launch events directed at China from anywhere on Earth. While those numbers are developer claims that still need independent verification, they frame the ambition, planet-level coverage through aggressive data fusion. A notable technical detail is the platform's use of QUIC, Quick UDP Internet Connections, a transport protocol that keeps data flowing quickly and securely across bandwidth-limited or intermittently connected networks. Quick's features, connection migration, low latency handshakes, congestion control, help keep telemetry and tracking updates moving even when links are contested or suffer dropouts. Beyond transport, the architecture is designed so that every collected data point can be reused for AI model training allowing the system to learn from edge cases and improve classification accuracy over time. In short, it's a pipeline that doesn't just move information, it gets smarter with use. Equally important is distributed, parallel scheduling. Instead of one central computer becoming a bottleneck, many nodes share the workload, each processing parts of the picture, then publishing standardized products back to top-level nodes for a coherent, up-to-the-minute view. This matters because early warning lives and dies on queuing speed. The faster an operator gets a trustworthy track with context, the more options remain available for measured, proportional responses and civil protection steps if needed. Chinese technical writing also highlights an integration approach that brings top-level command nodes into a unified situational environment. This aims to solve a long-standing problem. Different systems, bought at different times from different suppliers, often speak different dialects. By normalizing formats and metadata, the prototype promises to reduce translation friction and cut decision latency. The U.S. Golden Dome concept envisions a layered, global early warning and response architecture that links space-based sensing, terrestrial networks, and intercept layers through resilient, AI-enabled command and control. Announced in May 2025, it was introduced with an initial $175 billion figure to kickstart work, while independent assessments projected overall costs in the hundreds of billions over time, some estimates landing near $831 billion and others ranging into trillions, depending on how much is space-based and how extensively it is deployed. The aspiration is persistent, worldwide visibility on launch events, with seamless handoffs across orbits and domains. Where the program encounters headwinds is not in any single piece of hardware, but in data integration. Knitting together legacy networks, newer commercial constellations, diverse ground stations, and multiple service-specific systems into a single, queryable, low-latency source of truth. U.S. officials have been explicit that the central challenge is command and control at scale, getting the right data to the right node at the right time, with provenance and integrity while defending against spoofing and cyber intrusions. That difficulty is magnified by policy choices that remain open, which allied systems feed into the core graph, how shared data is labeled and protected, and where to draw lines for automated decision support versus human-in-the-loop oversight. Timelines reflect those realities. Public briefings point to near-term architectural decisions, followed by progressive demonstrations later in the decade rather than instant, full-spectrum coverage. Cost clarity also hinges on these choices, 
a sensing-first architecture that prioritizes fused awareness would be materially different from a more ambitious build that layers on extensive space-based response options from day one. Meanwhile, legal and norms questions continue in the background, particularly when proposals touch on space layer responsibilities and long-standing treaties. None of these issues make the program impossible. They simply mean that the path to a credible, scalable golden dome runs through boring but vital plumbing that actually work under pressure. The net contrast with China's approach, as reported so far, is about sequence. The U.S. is still freezing a blueprint for a very large system of systems, while China is demonstrating a fusion-first prototype and learning by operating it. If China's prototype performs as described, the near-term effect is timeline compression. Operators see a coherent picture of launch activity faster, with clearer context. That undermines strategies that depend on confusion, such as mixing diverse flight profiles and decoys to overwhelm human attention, because a trained, fused system can prioritize anomalies sooner and flag what truly demands action. The practical outcome is better resource allocation. Civil defense notifications triggered earlier, tracking assets assigned more efficiently, and downstream systems queued in a way that conserves limited bandwidth and attention. However, building a planet-scale service that remains dependable under stress is a marathon. Three external indicators will help audiences judge progress without access to classified dashboards. First, look for latency bands reported across exercises, how quickly a launch event becomes a stable track with confidence intervals. Second, watch accuracy metrics, false alarm rates, classification improvements after AI retraining, and performance on edge cases, lofted profiles, low signatures, complex staging. Third, monitor resilience. Outcomes from red team events involving jamming, spoofing, cyber probing, and link outages. Consistent disclosure of those bands, even in broad ranges, signals a system maturing beyond press statements. For the United States, three milestones will separate aspiration from execution. One, a reference architecture that states clearly what's in the baseline and what's deferred. Two, budget phasing tied to testable demonstrations, multi-orbit handoffs, cross-service command drills, and live data fusion with legacy nodes. Three, operational exercises with published after-action takeaways on data quality, automation boundaries, and human factors. When those appear, the program narrative shifts from promise to proof. Regionally and internationally, expect diffusion effects. Taipei has discussed centralizing air defense awareness in a single command environment, and other capitals will explore similar fusions scaled to their needs. As more actors adopt early warning integration, conversations about norms and responsibilities in space will accelerate. What counts as interference, what notification standards apply during on-orbit anomalies, and how to audit AI models used in safety-critical pipelines. These are not abstract debates. They determine how fast information can move during tense moments while keeping human oversight meaningful. China's fusion-first prototype and America's blueprint-first golden dome are racing toward the same destination. Fast, trustworthy, global early warning. The difference is sequence. China is learning by operating a prototype. The US is locking an architecture before scaling. What matters now are proof points, not promises real latency and accuracy bands, resilience under jamming and cyber stress, and steady onboarding of new sensors without stability loss. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.